Hey guys, and welcome to the Believing Better series. My guest today is Kayla Kincannon. Kayla is an integrative herbalist. She has been through the Integrative Life Coach program with me, and she is also a self-healing master. So she's been around for a while. We're going to talk about her experience today, the before and after, because to my surprise, I did not know that Kayla wasn't into like personal development and self-help and all of this stuff in the past. I mean, she was doing self-help with herbs, but it wasn't in the mind body stuff or the uh, mindset. And it took her on quite a journey because of that, you know, and we want to talk about that today for those who are new to coaching or new to transformation or um, self-development and let you know that it's normal. (laughs) It's normal to kind of... (laughs) kind of not know where you are and what's going on. And um, I thought it would make an interesting story for, for those who are listening. So welcome, Kayla. Thank you. This is fun. I've been looking forward to this. I've watched everybody else's conversations. And um, even though we've been through coaching together for a while, you always learn something new, every new conversation, every new question, every new perspective. So it's, it's, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So Let's talk about what was your old belief. You had a few. One, um, I'll let you pick which one you want to talk to, but the two that are coming to mind for me was um, I'm not able to, like that herbalism and coaching didn't, couldn't be meshed. Like you, you, you saw, you were kind of stuck between seeing them as two different entities. And the other is your belief about friends and community. Um, and we kind of proved you wrong on both. So I'll let you choose which one you want to talk about first. (laughs) They're really, they're kind of both in the same, um, or the same thing is I had this way of functioning in the world. I always describe it as like a Rubik's cube is I was one cube, but made up of hundreds of little tiny different things. And each of those individual compartments had a separate manual of how it should or shouldn't be. And so when it came to the herbalist versus life coach, in my head, an herbalist was one thing and a life coach was something else. And they were two separate businesses, two separate vocations. They couldn't be the same because one was physical and one was emotional. And so through the coaching process, learning to integrate those two was like, oh. And so all these little, um, instead of these individual cubes, they started kind of opening and bleeding over into each other. Um, And as far as the trust thing, that (laughs) goes way back to when I was a child, I had this, I was weird or um, not normal, quote unquote. And at home, that was something that was, I won't say celebrated, but it was like um, accepted. It's like, oh, well, Kayla, you know, Kayla just being Kayla when she's in the emergency room once a year or when she walks in a room and forgets why she's there. And that was just Kayla being Kayla. But then as I got older and went into school, that need and want to be accepted by other people, um, the being different wasn't... (laughs) Not only was it like, it just wasn't tolerated very well. And I very specifically go into 4-H camp with a group of girls that I thought were my friends. I came back and got letter like in the mail because it was pre-internet. And they had screwed, like I was trying so hard to be like them. I had observed everything they did because I wanted to be normal and I wanted to fit in. And it was this bullying letter about, they had noticed everything everything that I was trying to be like them, they called me out on, (laughs) like even to the point of, you know, you said that you didn't like camp food, but we saw you eat breakfast. Like it was, um, it was harsh and horrible at the time because it was like, well, I might as well not even try to fit in. And, but I would go back and forth to these extremes. I either was totally cold and mean and didn't consider anyone else or anything, or I was so desperate to be accepted and liked that um, I would cling to anybody who bothered to pay me attention. And it was a constant battle. And the whole time I'm accumulating these shoulds, shouldn'ts, can, can'ts, these, these books in my head of every situation. So like when I'm at school, this is how I'm supposed to be with I'm at friends this way. When I'm at home, I'm this way. When I'm at work, I'm this way. It was all these separated wow. parts and pieces. Is that and exhausting? So when I started it was exhausting all the time. <laughs> it was. And then of course, beating myself up all the time because, well, I said this at work and I should have waited until I was home to say that, or, um, it was exhausting. And my brain ran all the time with this constant self-criticism. And it was all this feeling of, I was weird and strange and broken in some way. So I was constantly 
developing this encyclopedia of how I should be instead of who I actually am. And um, that's all probably why I never dealt into the self-help stuff either, because that wasn't what a strong person should do. I should be, you know, another way. And so to break all of that down in the transformation process was huge and it was exhausting and it was sticky and weird because I went through that period where it was, um, I was so unstable. It felt like everything was unstable because I'm breaking down these old beliefs, but still hanging on to the shoulds and shouldn'ts. And it got so overwhelming at one point. That's when I like even backed away from the whole community. It's like, I'm not even going to do this anymore. It's too much. I needed to process it. I didn't understand it. Um, I thought that there were rules to being a coach and rules to being an herbalist and those two couldn't combine. And then there was rules to being Kayla and there was rules not. And it just, I had to back away in order to digest it. I really, I had to for a while. Can you see that it but was my, belief? can you see yeah, that I did, your belief I, about not belonging? I'm curious what, what was the, let's talk about what was the story when you were in it? You're like, I can't do this. This is not me. I don't know who I am or like, and then looking back, can you see a difference between those two? Just curious. It was definitely a belief that in order to transform, I had to be different from who I was. It felt almost like it was a, another set of expectations I couldn't meet. And, um, wow, I didn't know that, but I knew I wanted it because there were some parts of it that were so fulfilling and so, so um, amazing. But then other times it was like, I'm not like these people either. <laughs> like, what am I doing? And it was like a whole other set of rules that I had to try to fight and climb my way to fit in and, and, um, be, so I'm I curious, guess. did you think that it, like, it was about making you a whole nother entity, like all these other entities, like in your mind, you were just adding a whole nother way to be, that was going to be better than what you were like, Oh, this is going to be the way to be because that yeah, was your habit like of this picking was that up. The, this was the master list. Like if I checked all these boxes, then I was going to finally be the best version of me. I was going to be a better everything if I fit into one more box, into one more cube, into one more check mark. That's what it felt like. And it was very, very overwhelming because there were certain parts of my personality that I had discovered that I really liked. And it's like, okay, I'm learning these things about myself that are great, but then now I have to give them up in order to be a quote unquote coach. And so that's where a lot of that conflict and that needing to um, reevaluate came from. Yeah, this is so interesting because it's not at all as it is, as you can see now, right? We're, it's really the place <laughs> no, to not embrace. Even. Like we want the, the uniqueness more than anything else. We don't want the clone. We don't want the conditioned person. We don't want who the world told you to be. We want who you actually are. So we are like yeah. cracking through the code to discover her and bring, we're like celebrating bringing on <laughs> that difference. So I can imagine, yeah. like, this is new to me where so I'm kind of like in an aha moment right here. And so when I'm hearing you say like, so when I went to 4-H camp, I had to be a certain way in this certain grade with these certain friends. Then when I was home and then when I was with my family, like I had to be a different version of myself in all of those places to be accepted because your belief was I can't be accepted. I'm weird. I'm different. And so yes. you had created these identities. And then you said, did you kind of start getting confused about when you were supposed to be where, like you said, I said this at work. Or yeah. And that's that. most of the time when I was, I would beat myself up. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that with that person. Cause that's not where you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to do that in this other room or with this other group. And it was always this need to be like perfect. And I had to be good enough because somewhere in there, I had decided that who I am naturally normally wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Love this. <laughs> When did you decide that it was not only safe to be who you are, but we actually embraced it? It was while I was away, while I had stepped back. I, um, that loneliness that I fought so hard not to feel was stronger than ever. Like I, I, I felt even more isolated before because you can't unknow what you've already learned. So I knew a different way of, of thinking and a different way of processing information and, and emotions from the transformation from the first part of our um, journey together. And so there was that kind of understanding that I was changing a little bit and things that I wanted to do. But then when I pushed myself away from you guys too, it was an utter loneliness. Um, I wonder if it's because- And so when I started- Oh, sorry. 
No, so, but when I started getting lonely, what I ended up doing was starting to think, why? What am I missing? Why do I want this? Why do I miss it so much? And that's kind of what led me down the path back. Was, um, when I realized why I was missing it, I wanted desperately to find out exactly what I missed. And that's kind of the path that I walked down to get back. Yeah, sorry about that. Our connection's a little delayed. So that's right on target with what I was going to ask you. Do you think it was because you had actually experienced relating in a different way because this community is so rich in relationship? And so I'm curious if maybe you had experienced this relating with people who actually did know, like, and trust you or love you. And then when you, and but you couldn't see it, that that had <laughs> happened. And so when you separated, when you stepped away, which guys, what we, all of us do, we are never cut off. We cut ourselves off. I think it's so important to say that. So yeah, when you exactly. pulled away and then you experienced that separation, which was in alignment with your old belief, I'm weird, I'm different, I don't belong. So then you took that yeah. action, which is I'm, I don't belong here either, or this is not for me either, or I'm not getting this or whatever your thought was. But then when you got there, this time you had a new awareness of what actually you had experienced that is that what I'm hearing I want to see if we're on the same page yeah it was the presence of it it was the understanding learning how to be present was a huge deal because when these feelings would come up I would take the time to think about why where are they coming from what thoughts create which is something I had never done before um and the other thing was it really came down to I trust these people more than I do other people <laughs> like I trust this I trust being in this group and being vulnerable with them more than I do someone else it, I, at that point I hadn't gotten to trusting the community a hundred percent yet but I knew that there was at least a little bit more trust there than I had anywhere else and so I made a commitment it's like I'm either going to trust this process and trust that these people are going to accept me or I'm going to have to not do it all it, it wasn't a um I was at a point where I needed to just make a commitment one way or the other the choose, commit, and cultivate. <laughs> it was really, that, that's where I had to go with it because I wasn't happy. I, I wasn't happy before and I wasn't happy then. And I was tired of not being happy because I know that being happy is possible. And I think we, we, we find the community that we want to belong in or that we do belong in, but then the old, um, the, the, the old story in the body, the residue of the old experiences is like, oh, you better watch out. This is when it happens, you know, with it. And we interpret stuff that is actually painful for us. So I remember when you open, cause I know you, and I don't know if you feel this, I see it and I feel it, but the community is so supportive of you opening this herb store oh, in gosh, yes. rural Louisiana. We're all like, yes, yes, yes. Like we're so sure we want you to do it. And then yeah. But yeah, you're the one who has to take the steps to do it. Right. So it's a little bit different on your, like our excitement and your excitement's a little different. It's no, there's no risk for us. You know, yeah. we support you. We're excited, but we're not the ones who have to like paint the, buy the building, paint the building, open the doors <laughs> and then serve the people yeah. in Evangeline Parish. Um, but what I noticed is when you open the doors and we surprised you, we were like, oh, let's go no. check out Kayla's place and bring some mimosas. And you were shaken up. Like, I think we blew a theory for you in that moment that. You did. And it was scary, Kim. Like, and I thought about it before, cause I knew Danielle was coming. That was kind of the guys for me to be here when she showed up. And then I saw Angie sitting outside and it never dawned on me. I kind of got afraid. It's like, what do they want? And then in my head, it's like, oh my God, I'm not really ready. And they're going to want to ask me questions that I can't answer. And then Kim's going to try to say, why haven't you done this yet? And like all this stuff. And then even when I got home, I was like, oh man, I feel so stupid. I shouldn't offer them anything to drink. There were no chairs for them to sit. Like I was still beating myself up, mm. but I was in awe of the fact that you guys were there because it was something I never, I knew that if I said, Hey guys, I'm going to do a grand opening. Why don't y'all come? that y'all would be here. But the fact that y'all by yourselves just spontaneously showed up shocked the crap out of me. Actually, I wasn't surprised, like expecting any of it at all. Yeah. I remember you were like the energy in your body was, was a, was a little like that. And you said it, you said it, you were like, Okay. So I, I think the next day, maybe you posted in the group or you maybe even said it to us then, but you were like all those years that I've been believing like yeah. you know, just proved it wrong. 
You just proved my that, brain wrong. That was it. Y'all proved me wrong that I can't, that I can't be friends with women. Y'all absolutely proved me wrong. I can't trust women. I can't be in yeah. relationship with women. Cause that was your story. When you came in, you're like, it's all guys, like my husband, my sons, my kid, my best friends, you know, so interesting how we, um, we hold on to some of these stories. Am I freezing yeah, on you? Yeah, it was even like, it's like, that's why I have three sons is God knew that I can't be around like females. And so he just insisted I have three daughters and, you know, three sons instead of daughters. I was totally convinced about all of that. Mm -mm. But I didn't think like a woman. So women didn't understand me. And so therefore I couldn't trust them. So how would you, I'm going to ask some of these questions on here. So what was the transition phase like when going from the old to the new? So it was in between right before you came back when you were like, okay, I'm not so sure. It's that bridge of uncertainty where I'm not her anymore. Or I don't have those thoughts anymore or beliefs, but I'm not quiet or don't even know who I'm supposed to be yet. How was that experience for you? It was, I try to describe it as like trying to walk on jello. It was sticky and unstable all at the same time. Like it, it's this like sugary sticky to where it was difficult to move forward but then every step you took it was like standing on a wave everything was um shifting constantly and that's where getting back into the presence and making the choice do I move forward or do I stay stuck and of course like like in jello or sand or however you want to describe it if you sit there too long you're going to break the surface and sink so it was like wait do I stay here or do I move forward and it seemed it would shift hourly sometimes it's like no I'm good I'm going to stay here and then well maybe today I'm going to take a half a step. And it was just kind of that always making decisions, but the realizing that I had a choice, like I could, there's no such thing as have to, I don't have to even wake up in the morning. I don't have to go to work, but I enjoy having a house. So therefore that's what I'm going to do. I don't have to clean my house, but I don't want to live in filth. So therefore I'm choosing to the transformation was the same thing. I didn't have to do anything. But every single hour, sometimes, or every day or every week, it was a choice to move forward. And sometimes that freedom was almost overwhelming, realizing there was no have to, that everything was a want to. But then once I got used to the concept of I want to do this because the result is what I'm after, then it was most empowering, like freedom I've ever felt. I've never felt more free in my entire life. I even know today I can shut this building down if I want to, and that's okay. I can shut, you know, but I don't want to, but knowing that it's a choice, that there's no such thing as have to. Um, it's like is permission to change your mind, right? To choose every single day. What am I going to do today? It's, um, that's where the freedom I feel comes from. So I'm curious. And that's um, what makes me happy. <laughs> I'm curious. What was the turning point? Was it, was it, something you saw in the group? Was it me reaching out to you? Was it you reaching out to one of us? Was it, what was it? Like, I don't, I'm genuinely don't know. So I'm trying to play back to feeling, feeling this and then feeling you come closer. So there's something. I'm... It wasn't a, a one thing. It was more like, um, I had excluded myself and therefore felt like I couldn't reach out to anyone anymore. And so when I took that step to back away, when I had a question or when I was feeling something that I couldn't identify, or I had a, um, a moment where I needed some coaching, just the missing that it's like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, um, that's, I think what started that building that trust yeah. in my brain was okay. I, apparently I do trust these people for something because I miss talking to them. You know, when I have a question about life, I want to go to them. And so that must mean something. Sometimes it just, it's just that we need to experience the contrast to see what we have, you know, to see what, I think Emily and I yeah. talked about this when, when she was, she went through the coaching and then she didn't continue whatever, wherever we're continuing. And so there was this kind of like, I can't get support anymore. I'm not part of this anymore. And kind of like disassociated herself, which sounds like the same thing that you're saying. I think the difference is um, when like you were still at a vulnerable place, those beliefs hadn't been shed yet. And that's why I wanted to bring this up to the audience today, because when our clients, this is for all of you who were presenters on the show, whenever our clients start feeling the dissonance is too strong, they go back to the old habit and your old habit was to escape, was to shut down, was Absolutely. to close off. 
yeah, I isolated myself, not just from this, um, the community with you guys. I also isolate, like I wasn't socializing with old friends either. I was, um, I love to have my family over at my house and I wasn't even inviting people over like my mom and dad and stuff. I had went into this complete like cocoon. It was just, I, I needed some time to digest. It was so much going on at one point. Like I felt very vulnerable and, um, and afraid. I was afraid to move forward. I, I knew I didn't want to go backwards, but being stuck didn't feel right. And so I just isolated from everything. I went to work and I went home and put on my pajamas. And like, that was it. That wasn't any, anything of any kind. You, like I was isolating myself. Did you isolate, like, did you remove yourself from the vision and the, like from the dream of creating what you created at that point also? Was it kind of like, did you put it on the back burner or did you, did it? Would it no. Oh, not the Let's herbalist store. I, I didn't do that. But the idea that I could become, well, that I decided I was an integrative herbalist, like an integrative okay, herbalist okay. is something that I created with inside myself. That wasn't something I was even playing with because it was, um, I'm just going to be an herbalist and I'm just going to open a store with the idea. Well, there's wrong. a life coach. That's not going to work. Here. Yeah. Or I had to be one or the other. So the, I'll be a life coach later. I'm going to be an herbalist first. Mm -hmm. And so the practical, you know, finishing the building and doing the herbal work that never went away, but the whole concept of um, becoming a life coach was like, eh, maybe one day, but, but then going through that process of isolating and thinking about what I wanted, cause it was always still kind of there, a little tick in the back of my head, going through that deep process of, um, wanting to come back and trying to figure out why and what I was going to get out of it. That's when it dawned on me is I'm not an herbalist and I'm not a life coach. I'm an integrative herbalist. So I don't have to have separate. They're not separate. They're the same thing. I, I wonder. And that was a big revelation. <laughs> yeah. I Cause I'm like sitting here, like sometimes it's frustrating that I have this vision and I share it and then like <laughs> y'all get it and we're doing it. And then you somehow forget it. Like, and I'm like, no, 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 we're still holding the, what happened? Where, where'd you go? <laughs> like <in> there, <laughs> this happens like what you just said, like, oh, suddenly Oh, I can do this, which is the same thing we talked about two years ago. So to me, it's funny. I'm sure there's some of the girls laughing on here, but I'm wondering if that's a bit like I'm a six, two in human design. I'm a visionary. And I do speak from that futuristic perspective, from that aerial view. Like I know what we're creating here in the container that we're doing, but I didn't realize that you guys didn't really know that vision. Like it was just a vision. I didn't know that. Like personally, I didn't know that that was happening until like Mallory and Danielle and Pay, like they kept bringing it to my attention. Like, it's like, you, you tell us this thing, but it's like, you've been thinking all this time and working it out in your head. And then you give us like the punchline, but there's nothing to, um, like, we don't have the thing to the theme to connect it to. Like, you're not sharing the whole thing. You're just sharing yeah. that. And so you sometimes your conversations would jump from like one to 30 and somewhere in there, I, I didn't understand or didn't hear the 26 or 27 steps in between. It was like, wait, where's Kim going with this now? I'm not understanding because that was that middle, the, um, the meandering, the um, reasoning and all like that stuff was always missing, not always missing, sometimes missing. And that's when I couldn't follow. It was like, wait, she's jumping to where now? I'm still so like, interesting. especially where, I mean, because I, I was like, like wait, you're I feel like I'm telling I, everyone. Self-help was, self was such a brand new concept to me that like when it was go from like here to here and then back down, I would get so lost sometimes. I didn't know what I was doing anymore. It's so fascinating. And I don't even think it's the, there's a problem with the way it's working out. I think it's just the way the mind works. Like, like we we're okay. This, when, so when a client comes to me and they tell me what they want and I see this vision and I'm like, oh yeah. And any of you who have talked to me and you're part of this, I've already told you what I see in you and how you're a part of this. That happens at the beginning. I think the difference is I don't forget it. <laughs> like it, I don't, like, <laughs> I'm like, when did this change? Emily just said that she was like, I thought she was an integrative herbalist from the beginning. Your brain decided it couldn't work. It's too hard. There's no way this, so you couldn't see the vision. And I think that's something that I learned more than anything else this year is that I really need to like take them to the vision through visualization, through meditation, through experiential processes, take them to their own vision to experience it in their body. Then you have that imprint 
then you can see it, then you can feel it. Because what I didn't realize is you kind of, I don't know that you can or can't, but what I'm seeing is, and you guys can all chime in on this, does, like, it's more like a borrowing the belief from me. But is that effective yeah. if you never really believe? I won't even say borrowing the belief, but borrowing your enthusiasm. Like when I was feeling doubtful, I was trying to, okay, well, if Kim is excited about this, then I should be too. Or there must be something to it if this makes her so happy to talk about. It was more borrowing your energy than borrowing your, um, your vision. And it was really interesting. We did an interview early on and we were talking about how to use herbs to, um, to calm, relax, or neutralize the nervous system. And I remember in that call, I was, we were saying the same thing, but your perception was different from mine. And it was almost as if I was saying there was no need for all of that stuff. Like the herbs, the oils, the, 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 the you just need to do this. And cause you said, well, for those people who are not Kim Gilry, like, what do we do? Or something like that. And I was like, <laughs> What? What are you talking about? <laughs> and I think it was a misinterpretation of me saying it wasn't important. I'm like, oh my God, the reason I went, when you said you were going to be a master herbalist, I was like, oh God, I, we're going to do some work together. I mean, this was like probably eight years ago. No, it's more than that because I sold that business 10 years ago. So it was a very long time ago. Like, and then it when, wasn't even, it's what I kept hearing was that, and <laughs> I was in life coach training, right? So I kept hearing about, you know, this is how you're going to be a life coach. And this is how you're going to build your life coach business. And this is how you're going to make money as a life coach. And in my head, it's like, yeah, but I, I'm an herbalist. Like I want to be an herbalist first. I, that's what I wanted first. That's what I really want to do. That's why I even picked up the phone to call you. And so I didn't see the two as one thing. They were so wholly separate that I would get frustrated because my understanding was like, Kim's wanting, forgetting that I'm an herbalist. Like she forgets about that. I'm an herbalist. She just wanted me to be a life coach. It's I'm two things, Kim. Like that's what I kept in my head. It's, Kim, I'm both. I'm two things. Yeah. But they I remember were really saying, just one. I had not known. Yeah. I remember saying, like, you really just want to open an herb store and sell two dollar lavender. Like, you think that's gonna go well and pay your bills? Like you have to teach these people how to integrate those herbs in their process with the mental and emotional understanding in order for them to get the results. And so it's like, I feel like I kept saying it the whole entire time, but maybe because we were focused on coach training and teaching you mindset and teaching you, you know, the emotional processing technique that just because herbalism wasn't in the conversation didn't mean it was excluded because all of you have your own gift, right? Some are Reiki masters, some are herbalists, some are homey, it's homeopathy, or maybe it's essential oils, or maybe it's massage therapy because you're health and wellness practitioners. You're all using some sort of modality. But when we're in the training, we're only focused on what you're learning and then we integrate it. But something happened in that process that you were just this, I'm out. And I think it was an old belief about I'm weird, I'm different. She doesn't get me. She doesn't hear me. I don't fit here or whatever. It was just an old story. Yeah, it was that belief shifted. that um, this is one more group that didn't understand me. If Kim doesn't understand me, then nobody's going to understand me. Like if I can't make him understand and there is something broken within me. So I just shut everything down. I did. I acted like a toddler. My brain took over and I'm going to go sit and suck my thumb in the corner. <laughs> like that's what it felt like I did. Until you sit there long enough to where you get the loneliness and you're, oh, 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 oh. maybe it wasn't so bad, right? This is hilarious. And maybe I want to ask everyone, <laughs> I want to ask everyone on the call. I know this is going to be a replay, but for those who are here, how many of you did not see Kayla as an integrative herbalist? Because it's hilarious from our view. No one <laughs> lost the vision, but you. Yeah. <laughs> that's it the, is that's funny. the power of beliefs. It didn't matter if there was 15 of us cheering you on and believing in you and seeing it in you, because if you didn't believe it, didn't matter how many of us are telling us. That's like when someone's always telling us we're pretty or we're smart or like we're really good at what we do and people want this. It, you can have 20 people telling you that. If you don't believe it, it just goes right over your head. We can't yeah, and I was still so believe. convinced that people didn't like me, that I couldn't trust people with who I truly was. And so going in there from that defensive thought process, of course it didn't work in my brain because I didn't want it to. I wasn't allowing that belief to be changed or different in any way. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't available for you. It wasn't available. And I think that's the hardest thing about belief work and changing perception and 
transforming the identity that we create through the conditioned self versus being the authentic self. Yeah. I had to have accepted myself first and I still hadn't done that yet either. <laughs> I was still convinced I was weird. So um, that and was the first big thing. It's like, this is who I am. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, we want more of her. <laughs> Could we have more of who you are? But of course I didn't believe y'all. <laughs> and then I went, so oh, what did you, what did you think? They're picking on me. They're trying to convince me. They're trying to sell me. They don't understand. Like what was, what was the, um, your brain's BS about that? That they're For too me. nice to tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes that's what I would say. The other group, they were just too nice to tell me the truth. Um, and then from you, it was like, she just wants me to be just like her. And I don't want to be Kim. Like it was, it would bounce between different things. It, it and I know that's not what you wanted, but that's how I was doing it at the time. It was, uh, it's so funny. I'm like, guys, the world can only handle one Kim. Please do not be a clone of me. <laughs> Here's the process. But it's almost like I had just, I decided what y'all were thinking before I even gave you an opportunity to listen. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is what they're thinking. And so of course, everything you said validated the thoughts I had. Right. Because that was your perception. That was your understanding. It's just like, like I had a coach that I was like, they're just saying that because they want me to pay them more money. They just want me to stay in. Like, they don't believe in me. They're still, they're not even helping whatever. They just want me to keep upping. You know, they want me to keep rebuying yeah. or they want to keep selling to me um, because I didn't believe in myself and I couldn't see it. I look back now and I was like, God, I could have got this such a long time ago. That's what I, where I'll go into the self-defeat. And then I'm like, actually those painful years that's really what got me to the place that I'm at right now in the confidence and the clarity and the really understanding because I suffered in that misidentity myself for so long that I recognize it in you guys, you know, because it was so real for me. It was so painful. Yeah. I had to realize I was rejecting myself and blaming y'all before I ever could get close to trusting anyone else. Yeah. And that's again, part of my, I call it like the digestive phase that I went through where I backed out is the realization that I was, no one was rejecting me. I was rejecting myself. But as long as I continued to do that, then I was never going to be allowed to be, I wasn't going to allow anyone else to accept me, even as much as you wanted to. When I was rejecting who I was, um, I never gave you guys an opportunity to even make up your mind one way or the other. I was making it up for you. Do you think you would have been able to make that switch? if you wouldn't have had the foundation of the work that we do ahead of time, do you think you would have just kept? Oh, absolutely not. I would have, it, it just would have been a repeated pattern of everything else. That's what made it so weird is I couldn't get away from it. I tried, I tried to get away from it, but I couldn't because you can't unknow what you know. And so when I was going through these feelings, instead of getting angry and saying, you know, screw these people, I don't want anything else to do with them anymore. It's like, oh crap, where is this? coming from now and then like I would go through the process and then get frustrated it's like why am I doing this I don't want to do this anymore but I had it done it I couldn't undo it so that, that was part of it too you can't unlearn something once you know it you just know it <laughs> well I think we can we go through like deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper levels of like going beyond the veil and then when you touch inner truth you can't unlearn inner truth yes you know, and that's, it's like, that's the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think there is, there is something in there. Um, and I think it's fascinating how actually it's painful for me that clients will come through and get where you got, and then just go jump to another container, another container, another container to try to get it there, try to get it because they really believe the problem is here. And so, but you, you came to that awareness on your own. And I think it's almost the, um, um, is it the, I'm, I'm going to get this so wrong, but the prodigal son, child, whatever, where they go and then they come back. <laughs> it's like yeah, that. the prodigal son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that story of, um, cause I've, I've done it so many times and it's so humbling, Kayla. Like I'm, it, it's hard to like, and you did it silently. So no one really knew what was going on. It's only that we talked about it after that we're talking about it now, but, um, I do think it probably prevents a lot of people from coming home because of the shame that they, they judge themselves. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of shame. In fact, when I um, was even texting you, it was like, okay, Kim, I don't even know the rules anymore. What calls can I, and can't I get on anymore? That took um, a lot of self-coaching just to even send you that one text message. And then I felt this need to apologize. It's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I left and like over explain, but I ended up not having to do any of it. Cause you're like, okay, 
cool hi Kayla and then like life went on there wasn't <laughs> even any kind of big I was making a drama in my head that didn't exist but exactly. there was a shame in, in giving up it's like I can't believe I gave up but I'm realizing now I didn't really give up the work I just um I kept it going just very isolated I guess and you were never not I a wanted. part of the community that's what's so interesting I never stopped like including you in all, like all of you guys know this, you're always like tagged in all of the posts and all of the, like it, you're never, if anyone eliminates, it's themselves. And that is painful for me. Cause I'm like, dang it. There's their belief was just too strong to see it. Like they just couldn't see beyond the belief that they are not supported. Um, they don't understand me. I'm different. I don't belong here. Like all of those things were so strong and the neural pathway was so deep that they actually couldn't receive the invitation. Yeah, I, I felt, that's why I said, that's why I felt like I needed to apologize or to even ask you permission. Um, and you're absolutely right. I was never not part of any form of communication. I was choosing to ignore it. I was choosing just, yeah, yeah, click it away. But um, there was some shame involved in feeling like I had failed and failed you and failed you know, my colleagues. And these, you know, I just, I, there was, but then when I got there, I was like, oh, well, this is fine. There is really nothing here to be worried about. It was just my experience. It happened to be different than somebody else's and that's all. And I think recognizing that we're on this journey, guys, we're on the interstate. Sometimes we stop at exit 62 and we hang out there a while. We look at the view, we do some things. Sometimes we go back and then we come forward again. And I think being part of a container or a community that understands and accepts that, then there's no agenda. There's, it's not like this, um, like it's, it's not so personal that, or like you're making me feel this way, or you're doing this to me, or you're just, it, there's none of that at all. It's actually, we're all on a process. We're all on a journey. We're all in this, like we're feeding off of each other and there is no labeling. There is no better than, there is no, um, you got it, it took you too long or you got it too fast or you get, there's none of that. It's all in the mind. Yeah. It's all in the mind. It's true. And then even the backing out and kind of isolating myself, part of my human design is the hermit thing. And so that makes me feel a little more comfortable too, that sometimes I don't have my aha moments in the group. I have my aha moments personally, then I can come back and share with you. But just because I'm not having big, huge breakthroughs in a group call doesn't mean these group calls are not important or not significant. In fact, without them, I would have never, ever come this far. Mm -hmm. But um, even accepting something as simple as that was uh, a big step forward with me. That's just That's part of who I am and not judging myself for it. Yeah, I can relate to that too as a 6'2", and I have the hermit. And I think that's what these gals are talking about when they say, I do all of that within, and then I show up with the conclusion. And they're like, you missed the context. You have, there's, we have nothing to relate this to. What are you saying? Where are you coming from? That's not what we talked about last time, you know, and stuff like that. And I think it's the same, it's exactly what you're saying right now is, and that's what, you know, being in self-healing masters and it's really discovering our design and our uniqueness and our blueprint of our human existence here, understanding that has been a game changer for so many of us, you know, and being treated as that in this container has really helped me also because I'm like totally off, let myself off the hook of that is how I process an experience. And I bring that experience to the table, you know, that's my role. Yeah. And it's, um, and having, it's so much fun having the whole group doing this human design stuff together because it's so safe to ask questions and, and what ifs it's like, Oh, well that makes sense. That's why I did that yesterday. Or, you know, Hey Peggy, what does yours say? Why, you know, our Mallory's, you know, it's, it's just nice to even have a group of us exploring the same topic. Yeah. So then we can ask questions and laugh and joke and understand each other um, in so many different ways. It's such a safe place to just play and learn. So I'm going to ask you the question, um, speaking basically to the audience of that has not experienced coaching before because of where we live. It's kind of new because it was new to you. And so yeah. what, what did you think it was? And then now how would you explain it? I thought coaching would have been a whole lot of it's okay and you're okay. Like just a lot of patting you on the back kind of, oh, it's okay, you're not doing anything wrong. And then the perceptions of um, it's okay to be selfish. It's okay to be self-centered. It's okay to only do what you wanna do, not consider anybody else. Like that's what I thought coaching was. 
And in reality, coaching is just a, um, it's someone reminding you or this form of coaching, let's put it that way. It's the integrative coaching is just someone there giving you permission to be who you are, but at the same time with the understanding that you're still responsible for the consequences of your choices. It's, you're not free of consequences. You're not given permission to just do whatever you wanna do without the understanding that whatever choice you make, you do have a consequence on the other side. Ooh, and that was good. something that I didn't expect from coaching that coaching holds you accountable to yourself by making you recognize this is your choice. And if you're choosing to say miserable, the consequence is, if you're choosing to do something different, the consequence might be, but it's reminding you that the choices of yours, but you can't escape the consequences of whatever decision you choose to make. And we're going to allow whatever you choose without judgment. Yeah, and there's no judgment on which choice you make, but it's reminding you, it's like, don't make this choice and then come, you know, it's, it's a, um, of course you could make whatever choice it is. If I want to shave my hair and tattoo my forehead, y'all are going to be, okay, Kayla, that's really cool because it's your choice, but then understand, like, <laughs> don't complain about it later and saying that somebody made you do it. Like it was your choice and this is what you got to deal with. We're going to keep loving you anyway, and you still have a place, but just know that you're going to be dealing with it because <laughs> we're exactly. not carrying it for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the coaching ended up being, but that's not what I expected it to be at all. All right. Um, what would you tell others that are now where you are to encourage or inspire when looking back where you were and where you are now? How would you um, tell someone else who's considering, like, let me just say this. They have a manual or they have an agenda. They think it's supposed to be a certain way. It's all black and white. This is right. This is wrong. Cause that's kind of where you are, right? This, that kind of that. Yeah. Um, so they are believing that this is just the way life is. And this is just the way I'm supposed to act or supposed to behave in this certain group. What would you tell them coming from that? Place? Don't be afraid to consider putting it down, even if it's only for a little while. Don't be afraid to make that one phone call to see what putting the manual down might feel like. That was um, big for me. I was afraid to not have my manuals because I didn't know how to work without them, but I knew they were too hairy too heavy to carry. So just one phone call, one conversation, um, join the free Facebook group. If this is like your first time wanting to experience it, just consider that life can happen without you carrying around an encyclopedia on your back all day long. Like just be open to the possibility that there might be something different. Mm, then those rules, that rule book, what would you say, um, about self-healing masters? What's been the most, um, in transformational thing for you? With self-healing masters is the, um, for me, it's safety. It's so safe to, um, to talk and explore and to learn. And then having these group of people, their experiences might not be my experiences at that moment, but I can actually go back and say, oh, well, so-and-so had this on the phone call the other day. How did, you know, how did we work through that? It's, it's super, I can't even explain it. Like having the, uh, it's like having a trampoline almost. Like you can go and you can see and they're gonna push you back up. It's not like falling into a pit and it's not, um, it's safe. If you wanna go sky high, you've got a place to bounce back up. You're not just gonna hit the ground and break into a thousand pieces. It's really nice. So we're about to, like we're coming to an end. So I wanna talk about what you do with integrating herbalism with mind-body connection, cause that is what you do. And we'll leave your contact information below, but do you want to um, give an example of how you can help a client by in, in integrating this work with what you do? Sure, it's um, using the herbs as a tool to teach you how to get back in touch with your body when you, um, when your body's screaming for your attention, just kind of like a baby that needs a diaper change, you need to physically address that first. Then once that's done, then we go deeper into the emotional and um, spiritual side of things. And often it's just acceptance, but really that's what it is. Our first step is to get you in touch with your body first again. Then once you're in touch with your body, then we start to incorporate the mental, emotional, spiritual side so that you can actually feel well. You know, illness isn't, um, or wellness isn't just a lack of illness. Just because you don't have a diagnosed disease doesn't mean that there's something not off with your body. And so what the work that I do is to bring you back in line so that you can actually be well and um, 
heal on an emotional and physical level. And then you can live the life that you want to after that. You're not hindering yeah, yourself then, anymore. By, um... I think we both stopped. Um, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I, I'm not, I can't tell if you freeze or if you stop. So I apologize. We might have to re-record this, but the, um, what I see is they're not even available for the deeper work or for the, the integrate integrative coaching and stuff until you have their physical bodies stabilized until you have their nervous system stabilized. They're not even available to receive this work or to even, even understand it. Right. That's why we use presence first is to be able to help them. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, a, um, you can't, you know, try to expect your one year old to walk while they're starving. You've got to feed them first. And so that's how I look at it a lot. You're in your body's screaming for attention. You need to physically address that so that it becomes less of a distraction. And then you can dig deeper into what the true cause is. Yep. There you go. All right. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you were just dying to share? Here is your opportunity. I talked way more than I expected to. So no, we're good. <laughs> Whatever. And anybody can ask me questions if they want to. All right. Um, when looking back, what's one thing your now self would tell your past self when you were thinking of ejecting, of pulling back, of being afraid, what's something that you would tell yourself to self-soothe and stay in the game? It's okay to take a chance without knowing the end result. Ooh, that's good. All right, my friend, thank you for coming on. I'm going to go ahead and end this. Kayla's contact information will be below the video so you can reach out contact or you can also find her in the more than mindset facebook group or better yet come on over and join us in self-healing masters thank you for joining us